Okay, the next thing we're going to do is draw a perfect circle. So come over to the toolbar, go to our rectangle tool that we know and love, and uh, this little triangle here, click and hold on that and choose the ellipse tool. Now to make a perfect circle, you hold down the shift key, then click, hold, drag. So hold down shift, click, hold, and drag, and you'll make a perfect circle. And, you know, whatever um, your settings are, we're going to make, again, this a black fill, no stroke. So you should know how to do that by now. Uh, double click on fill, choose black, and set the stroke to zero points. And that, that's what I want. Um, click on the black arrow and click anywhere to deselect. Well, I should have done that, actually. Um, you might hear my cat crying in the background. There's a long story behind that. He's a well cared for cat. He's 18 years old and sometimes he gets confused and starts howling. So if you hear that, it's kind of distressing. Don't let that freak you out. Okay, sorry about that. All right, anyway, uh, select the black circle that we just made. Copy the circle with Command C or Control C. C is in cat. And now we're going to paste this right on top. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this, but the easiest thing to do is to go to Edit, Paste in Place, right here. Edit, Paste in Place. So now we got a black circle on top of a black circle. Let's make this top circle white. Come over to the, the fill color, double click on it, and choose Paper. Okay, so now we got a white circle. No stroke on top of a black circle. With the black arrow selected, hover over one of the corner um, bounding boxes, hold down Shift, and hold down Option. Click, hold, and drag. And why isn't it going? There it goes. Holding down Shift and Option, and clicking, holding, and dragging. Now, holding down Shift, keeps the object in the same proportion. Holding down the Option key, or Alt key on the PC, um, makes it move uh, around the center of the object. So hold down Shift, Option, and grab the bounding box, and make like this, like this uh, O shape, or wheel shape, or whatever the heck you want to call it. All right, so that's cool. Now, black arrow enabled, you can hit the letter V, uh, or click on it over here. Grab this black rectangle we made earlier and put it like in the middle of the, um, and you'll get a little green indicator there that it's over the center. Like you'll see a vertical green light line go through the rectangle. All right, so that's cool. So that's where I want this, but it's hidden behind the white circle. It's in the back. So the stuff, the objects that you make previously, they're like on the bottom. They like stack up, you know? So as you make more and more objects, the InDesign translates that as that you're putting stuff on top of each other. So I want to move this black rectangle to the very front. So with the bounding box visible, go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. I click on that and there it is in the front. What I want to do is uh, shorten this so I can uh, so it doesn't go outside the boundaries of the circle. Now you could just grab one bounding box here and pull it up this way and pull it down that way and that's great you know super but another way to do it you can grab the center bounding box on either end hold down the option or alt key and when you hold down option or alt it like um, you know brings it in towards the center of the object and this is what I want here so let's save the file command s or control s okay the next thing after we made this object is let's use the pen tool so first of all, make sure in this uh, that we have a no fill and a black stroke, okay? And then activate the pen tool, and you can hit the letter P on the keyboard, or you can just select this icon for pen tool. Now, 
when we get into Adobe Illustrator, we're going to use the pen tool a lot, and there's lots and lots of stuff you can do with the pen tool. For this stage of the game here, where we're at for this, I just want you to make straight lines. The only thing I want you to do is make a triangle. So all you do is you, you click and let go. Go to another area, click and let go, and then it makes a line. Go to another area, click, let go and then hover over the first place that you uh, started and you'll see a little, the, next to the pen tool there'll be a little O click and let go so now that's an enclosed uh, triangle now you know we can activate the black arrow we have the bounding box let's change that to again a um, black fill and a no stroke Okay, so remember, you have to see the bounding box for to be able to edit this thing. That's all I want you to do with a pen tool is just make a triangle. That's it. Um, two more things we're gonna I'm going to show you, then we're going to end this exercise. Uh, come over to the um, Shapes tool and hit the drop-down menu and go back to the Rectangle tool. And just make a plain old rectangle with a uh, black stroke no fill. Now enable the white direct selection tool. It's a little bit different. And once the white uh, thing is selected, you have to deselect de any by clicking anywhere in a canvas. Hover over the upper left corner, click on it, and click hold and drag, and you can what the direct select tool, and you can play around with this, in fact make a shape kind of like this. Um, the direct select tools, uh, tool allows you to grab individual uh, corners. Okay, like the, the black arrow, you increase or decrease the size of the entire object, or distort the entire object. The direct select tool, it lets you grab like one one corner or one these are called anchor points actually one anchor point at a time so i, I just want you to be aware of that okay uh, last thing we're going to do to wrap up this uh, little exercise um, activate the type tool by clicking on this big letter t and let's go in the lower left here let's just make like a nice big chunky um, text box here and we'll get a flashing cursor and once when you draw a text box come over to the right you'll see this context sensitive menu comes up in the properties um, we have the uh, f this is good this is what we want we want a, a fill this it should default to a, a black fill that's perfect this is the font or typeface properly called a typeface not a font if you hit the drop it says minion pro will probably be the default yours might be a little bit different if you hit the drop down menu you have the zillions and zillions of typefaces available to you in indesign and uh, the ones that you use most often will be up at the top but feel free to choose any one of them i'm going to choose Oh, I don't know. Let me choose this a body condensed. Um, I'll choose that one, and then increase the uh, point size here. We're we're going to go over all this stuff later on in the semester, but for this, we're this is the point size, twelve points. Hit the drop down menu, and let, let's say thirty points might be good. And down there, type in your name. and then save your file and this this is what I want you to um, this is the completed exercise okay so you're gonna turn in this file on blackboard the InDesign file right but you're also going to turn in a PDF for this and throughout the semester we're going to be doing this process a lot you're going to export this thing as a PDF. So click on File, Export, and it might default to uh, Adobe PDF Print down here. Okay, so let me 
close up this window a little bit so we can see it. So the when you click File Export, this window, this export window will come up. It will go by default into the folder in which you're working, which is a good thing. Again, typically it will say Format um, Adobe PDF Print. Hit the drop down menu and choose Adobe PDF Interactive. Okay, that's because this will save file size. Not that it will really matter on this thing, but I want you to choose Adobe PDF Interactive and then click Save. When you click Save, what will happen is this will open automatically in Adobe Acrobat. So I'll click that and um, the these parameters, default parameters are okay. Click Export and then like I said it opened up in Adobe Acrobat. So your file should look very very similar to mine here. Okay, um, So you're going to upload this file as well, the, the PDF. So you're uploading two files, like I said at the beginning of the these videos. Upload the two files, um, the InDesign file and the PDF, and you're good to go. And um, that concludes the uh, intro to InDesign exercise.